Massachusetts potential home sellers. This video is for you. Uh, listen, we are deep in a seller's market. You probably know that. It's been that way for several years, which means there is uh, far less available inventory than there is demand. This means uh, buyers everywhere, bidding wars everywhere, and a lot of sellers are unfortunately taking this to make some fundamental mistakes when, uh, when approaching listing their home. So I thought I would offer a couple of tips from someone who's been in the business for a dozen years that may help you uh, avoid uh, making a mistake when you could actually be optimizing uh, selling your home right now. So, first and foremost, a seller's market does not mean your home is worth more than it's worth. It's not just a blank check where you can put your property out of the market for whatever you want to get out of it and expect to get it. The reason why is because here in Massachusetts, most people buy their homes with a mortgage. Uh, we have a relatively low instance of cash real estate purchases, and with a mortgage, there's always an appraisal. An appraisal is a third party who's going to come in and look at comparable sales to yours recently, and that's going to determine what your home is worth and what they are willing to lend on. So you can't just add 75 grand to that and say, well, a buyer's going to want to give me that. The buyer may want to give you that, but unless they have a suitcase full of cash, they can't. They've got to use their mortgage, and their mortgage is going to cap it where the appraisal comes in. So strategically, you are better off listing your property right around what its comparable value is and getting more buyers interested and those buyers competing against each other and driving up the value of their offers than listing it high, having less people interested, trying to negotiate down, and in the end, it's still going to come in right where a lender's appraisal is going to come in. So in the long run, you're better off listing it lower and having more people interested in it and fighting each other for it. Second, you really only get one chance to make the first impression in this market because generally speaking, you're going to put your property on the market Within a week, it's going to have a couple open houses, and within a day or two after that, you're going to have a pile of offers. So, you want to address all the little things that are going to distract a buyer from giving you their best offer in advance of that. Don't rush to market before touching up the paint. Talk to your, talk to your real estate agent. You should have an experienced real estate agent who spends their life walking in and out of people's houses and walking through with buyers and is going to tell you where a buyer's eyes are going to magnetically go because I can tell you this, you have a big beautiful kitchen that you spent 60 grand renovating last year. There's one cabinet door that's hanging a little off. That's what a buyer's going to see. And they're going to figure that's worth a huge amount of money that they're going to need to take off their offer or they're going to ask you for as a credit sometime later on in the process because they see that as a huge deficiency in your kitchen. Just fix it up front. Spending a little money up front will cost you a lot less than waiting and having people use that against you in their negotiations. Third, there's going to be a lot of very predictable questions that are going to come down the pike and the better you're able to answer them in advance, the better you're going to keep everyone that's interested in your property interested. In other words, do you have a septic system? If you do, it needs a Title V exam. It needs to be proven that it's not poisoning the ground around it. And buyers are all going to want to know this. So you have to get that done in advance of listing. You have to? No. But you should. You really should. If you have a shared driveway with the neighbor, you need to figure out exactly where your line is and which part of it is yours. Any of these questions that are obvious, they're going to come down the pike. Talk to your real estate agent. Again, find an agent that you trust and find out what questions you will be likely to see and get answers to them. You should have that in advance because this could happen very quickly. It usually does happen very quickly. And the more prepared you are, the more you're going to keep everyone who's interested engaged. Those people will then compete against each other and you're going to get the best terms and the best money out of your property. And lastly, listen, find an experienced real estate agent who you trust and who you like. There's a million of us. You don't have to take the first one you meet or your cousin's friend or your sister's husband or whoever you happen to know who does it. This may be one of the few times in your life you're selling a home. Use somebody who has a lot of experience who you like because this is all going to happen very quickly and you should trust them. You should be willing to call them at any hour of the day. You should feel comfortable engaging with them because it's a big turbulent process, especially with this kind of market conditions, and you want somebody that you feel comfortable with. Can we tweet it down?